Now, theorem two. The theorem two state that opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral is supplementary and they sum up to 180 degrees. Now the first theorem we are dealing with is triangle that is formed inside the semicircle. Here quadrilateral means four-sided plane figure. Four-sided plane figure. So a cyclic quadrilateral is a four-sided plane figure formed inside the circle. So we have a circle, example, and we have these two lines and then this also two lines forming a quadrilateral now it is saying that the opposite angles in the cyclic quadrilateral the angle here and the angle here will always sum up to 180 degrees in other words we can also have this x and y will also give what 180 degree they are opposite now i have another one here and this forms a quadrilateral inside the circle we say that the angle x plus the angle y will always give you 180 degrees so note the properties very well and they are all touching what the circle now a and b when you sum the complete thing here remember it's looking like a circle when sum A and B, they must give you 360 degree. Angle A plus B will always give what? 360 degree. But we are also coming to use the A and B here in this theory. So it means that if I have opposite angles in the cyclic quadrilateral, which is adding up to 180 degree, we can be able to prove this by saying that we have a circle first and drawing the quadrilateral inside and we say that the opposite angles are equal this angle and this sums up to 180 degrees so imagine we join two corners to the center of the circles imagine we join two corners from here to this like this to the center of the circle and then if we label the top angle as x if we leave the top angle as x then the one down here would be 2 x that's one of the properties of this second theorem so if here is x then here will be 2 x so this angle here is twice the angle subtended to the circumference over there it also means that when i add this and this will give me 100 and 80 degree now do the same thing with the opposite angle labeling y first so i label y here now the one at the center will therefore be what 2y so if here is y then the other opposite here will also be what 2y and that is why we stated i stated in the other one that here a and b we always sum up to 180 degrees so it means that sorry 360 degree so it means that 2y plus 2x here will sum up to 360 degree but we are still applying the properties in step by step so when i add x plus y they will give me 180 degree remember we are trying to prove the formula we're trying to prove the formula from another formula so the angle here is twice the angle here and the angle here is also twice that so it means 2x plus 2y is 360 like i said earlier on so x plus y is equal to 180 degree so i'm just trying to prove that if here is 2x plus 2y is equal to 360 degree divide through by 2 it means that x plus y is equal to 180 degree and the theorems have been proved like that please get it so this particular theorem which said that the angle here is twice the angle here is one of the properties which is my other video i'll put the link inside the description so you can watch it but with that we are able to get this other theorem that 2x plus 2y will give you 360 degree and you find that x plus y is 180 degree so it means this x and this x uh, sorry y is 180 degree we continue with it the angle at the circumference is half 
the angle at the center just like the theorem we just look at this angle here and the angle at the circumference so this is half of the angle at the center here so we said this angle is twice here huh? this is 100 then you'll be what 50 if here is 200 then you'll be what 100 so that's what the theorem is saying and we look at it in the proof that if here is x you'll be 2x this is the same as here also be what 50 it doesn't matter where it is touching the circumference but once it's substanding from this two end which is from the center then we say that it's giving you half of the center so here is 50 here is 50 i can have another one so look at the property very well so the angle here is twice the angle over here so if here is 15 degree then here will also be what 30 degree if here is 30 degree here will also be what 15 degree because this is twice this so i can able to get 15 degree the last one i will look at is this we said earlier this angle here is half of the angle at the center so it means the angle at the center here is twice the one here so if here is 130 degree then here will be what 65 degree that is you divide the angle here by two and able to get here look at the property very well when you're not able to get this property clear you will be confused but once you get this clear it doesn't matter how the diagram is twisted you become you'll be able to do it look at how this one is twisted but you know the one i marked by the red are always subtending from to the center to the center all right so it means the opposite here will also be what if i sum here to be 360 if here is 130 then here will be what 230 if here is 230 then i'll be able to get here which is half of what is here so here will be 115 you get the property now the fourth example from this theorem is that it's saying we should calculate the angle a and b give reasons for your answer i have always stated it give reasons for your answers so here is 122 degree then a will be what right a is half of the angle at the center so it means a will be what 60 degree angle at the edge is half the angle at the center then if a is 60 then b also be what 61 sorry so i mean 61 61 so the same as above so another example work out angle p and q and explain how you got your answers which is still asked it means the reason they are still looking for the reason so o is the center of the circle o here is the center of the circle and o when you sum everything at the o that will give you 360 degree note now quadrilateral a b c is exactly quadrilateral a b c d is a quadrilateral quadrilateral because it is a quadrilateral form in a circle which makes it a cyclic quadrilateral and the properties are clear we said that you can pause the video and try it before you continue but we said that the angle p here is half of the angle at the center so it, if you divide 102 by 2 you get p we also say that q plus p will always give you 180 degree in the proof we use here as x and here's y so it means p plus q will always give what 180 degree now we have to first find p p is 51 degree the reason is that angles and the circumference is half the angle at the center so the angle here is half of this which you can also say that the angle here is twice of that the vice versa and if i'm able to get this so p is 51 then p plus q will also give 180 degree so take 180 degree minus 51 and you get your q so it means that 
the Q is 129 degree just by taking it from what? The 180 degree. So when you add this plus this, you get 180 degree. Let's continue. Let's prove this. The angle at the circumference is half the angles at the center. Now, this is the property we used in proving our previous um, theorem. So, take note and follow tune. The angle at the circumference is half the angles at the center. We are proving it here. So, imagine we split the diagram into two. That is from the middle here. So, if I split it from here. Once we split it, we can label angle in the isosceles triangles to the left as before. So we call this isosceles triangle because this is a dime a radius and this also what a radius and they are equal. And isosceles triangles have two of its sides being equal. So that is why we said it's an isosceles triangle. And it means that the angles here are equal. So I can label here as x and label here is 2 as x, which means that to get this side, I will take 2 plus x plus x is 2x, take it from 180 degree, and we'll give you this angle. Again, I'll be able to find this other side of the angle just by using the other property we said that one exterior angle is equal to the sum of two opposite interior angles. So x plus x will give you this angle. Notwithstanding, you still use the we are still using the property of angles on a straight line. So if here's one this angle here is 180 degree minus 2x, and we want to look for this angle. So you just take 180 degree minus this, and that will give you 2x. So it means 180 degree minus 180 degree that will give you zero. And then negative negative will give positive 2x and that's why we got 2x here and then when we come to the other end we can apply the same idea to this other triangle x here and x here so here we are labeling y and y and means that here will also be giving you 2y so if this is 2x and this is 2y i can sum them up so 2x plus 2y and the angle at the circumference is x plus y, half of it. You can see that if I take half of this, I'll get x plus y. <laughs> you, you see the property clear? Because we are seeing that this angle here is half of the angle here. So if you take half of this, you will get x plus y. That is x, 2x plus 2y. You divide 2 by 2, you get x plus y. Which means that when I sum this angle to x plus y, they are equal, which means this angle here is twice this. If x, x is here, here will be 2x. If yes, y, here will be 2y. If yes, 2x, then here will be 4x. Here too is 2y, here will be 4y. Twice of that. That's the proof of it. We'll look at another theorem, and this theorem states that the angle between a tangent and a chord drawn from the point of the contact is equal to the angle in the same segment. So here is a circle, and this is a diameter drawn. You will be able to just identify this angle straight away to be what? 90 degree because it's subtending from the diameter. Now, the emphasis is that we have a chord, which is a tangent drawn. So this tangent is touching the circle. When we say a tangent is um, a line touching the circle, it's tangential to the circle. So this line is touching this circle. That's why I say it's a tangent, right? And the property is saying that if this angle here is alpha, this angle here is beta, then the center O and we have the whole triangle form inside is ABC. Now we are saying that this angle here, the angle formed here is equal to the angle, the angle formed here is equal to the 
angle formed at the top here so alpha is equal to beta alpha is equal to beta from the property so the angle between a tangent the angle between a tangent so this is a tangent and the angle here and a chord drawn from the point of contact is equal to the angle in the same segment so the diameter a b sorry a c forms one segment here a semicircle and this another segment so if the angle form here is in the same segment of the angle here then we say they are equal okay so this angle is in a different segment if you are having the angle a c t it's a different segment but we are looking at this angle here which is also equal to the angle here let's take one example and we are good to go so a b here is a tangent angle a b so line a b is a tangent to the circle and we say they are saying that we should write down the value of x we have found the value of x okay and we have to give reason why it is so now the angle here from the property is equal to the angle x so if here is 43 degree s will also be what 43 degree because they are an alternating they are in the same alternating segment this angle here is in the same segment to the angle formed by the this line to the circle that is a tangent so making it equal and we have taken it from the property which says that the angle between a tangent and the chord drawn from the point of contact is equal to the angle in the same segment so this angle are equal so thank you very much for watching the video and take your time to subscribe like especially so that youtube will recommend my video to other people and do me a favor by hitting the notification bell so when